basically, in terms of um, concerns, uh, one of the first questions a pre professor asked is, if I start to provide this for my students, will my attendance change? In um, almost every study that I've seen on this, uh, professors say that it, it uh, makes s small modifications but nothing significant that they, they wouldn't probably already be seeing. So Lane at the University of Washington uh, did a study and in her findings, um, she, uh, I think it was like 83% of the students had said that it was, I, I don't quote me on that one, but it was, it was in the high uh, 80s, or excuse me, in the high 70s or, or low 80s where um, students seemed to say that it wouldn't make any difference on their attendance in the course. Um, uh, and of those who were choosing to do it, um, likely those people are the people who would skip anyway. Um, one, the one study I saw where the person said that it made a difference was a person who only lectured. The classroom was from start to finish only lecture. And so of course when you provide the lecture outside of class and there was no discussion in class, nothing else took place in the class except for lecture, then it only makes sense that you're giving people an opportunity for flexible learning. And so then the question becomes, do you care? Um, is that important? If, if your primary um, uh, mode of instruction in the classroom is lecture and people choose to listen or watch your lecture at a different time of day where maybe they're um, more prepared to learn, uh, is, that a, is that better? Or is the discipline a, coming at a 8 o'clock in the morning class or an evening class or whatever the situation may be an important thing for us to uh, instill in these students? That's a question you'll have to ask. So, I mean, of the professors that are doing this, I've had professors tell me um, they think that it's, you know, maybe changed 15 students' mind out of a class of 70 on whether or not they need to come every time. And of those, um, th there are people that are, they believe are either um, good enough independent learners where it doesn't matter either way or they're the people who uh, would have skipped regardless if I was providing this technology or not. So the question is, are, is there a limitation on how many times? There is not. They can listen to it as many times. I mean, they're actually, um, they have the ability, depending on which format you use, you could be allowing them the ability to download it and put it on their own uh, mobile device um, so they could listen to it as many times as they want. And there's, um, uh, through the statistics, there's pretty good support for the fact that students listen to these lectures multiple times. Um, so they're, you know, as they're learning, uh, they may, they only, they may be only getting 40% of what you're telling them in a class period, uh, and then they go back and either reread the book or read the book for the first time, and you know, look a few things up, and then more of it makes sense to them. And so the fact that they can listen to it over and over again is, um, you know, something that you couldn't provide them, uh, the ability for you to just keep telling them over and over and over. Um, but with the technology, it's, it's easy to do. Uh, so uh, in terms of the tool that we've picked for this, Camtasia Relay, here's some reasons why we have picked this tool. And, and Ben referred to some of these in, in what he said to us. Um, the ease of use, uh, it is really simple to use this technology. Uh, once you have it set up initially, it's just record, publish, repeat. Re so you're just going back and forth, record, publish, record, publish, record, publish. Um, and so you can do that multiple times during a class period um, or, um, you know, whenever outside of class, whenever you want. Um, some professors are using this when they get students' questions. So if your course is at all um, one where maybe you need to reference something online, it's a possibility that you can just answer their questions um, while you're showing them something on the screen in your office. And then that answer to a student, uh, one particular student question could be used for other students as well, um, that you could share that link with other students. Um, it, it has been used in the past for people 
who are um, assessing student work. And so you actually create a recording uh, where you're maybe walking a student through um, your assessment of their work and you're actually uh, grading it and they're hearing your voice uh, instead of you writing all over their paper or their project. Um, which students the, in the places where this has been, have been done, um, the student evaluations of that professor's assessment are, I mean, those professors have told us that it's, it's through the roof. I mean, they, they just feel like that, that's the most special thing anyone's ever done for them. Uh, to have spent that time. And for that professor, uh, the one who specifically is, is using this on a regular basis, um, he's told me that, you know, this is, he can't do it another way. This is, uh, he's, he's not comfortable writing on paper, uh, writing on the papers. This is his style. So while the students thinking, are thinking they're getting a very special treat, he's seeing this is really the only way he would consider um, doing this activity. Um, the other uh, second reason why we like this uh, particular software is every professor can, can participate or, excuse me, can create. Um, and so the software is free. So as Ben was saying, he had the software on his computer at the office, um, but he didn't have it at home. And with this software, you can download it anywhere. Wherever you're at, whatever computer you have, you can download it on. You can download it on a friend's computer. You have your SPU credentials that you log into it with, so it's not like you're, you know, giving it away for Christmas presents or something. Um, but you, but wherever you're at and you have access to a computer, you can um, download the software, load it on there, and and use it. Um, so it's it works really well. You just need a computer and a microphone for probably around. Somewhere between twenty and fifty dollars, you can get a, 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 a decent to good microphone that would be quite adequate. Uh, some laptops, the built-in microphone is good enough. Uh, others, um, it's not. It's it's uh, the quality would be kind of scratchy. It'll there'll be a lot of static um, on the the built-in mic, and you wouldn't want to use that. Um, but we're happy to just sit down with you and help you assess what would be best. Uh, for your particular situation. And then you only need a, you need a high-speed connection only when you're ready to upload. So we've had people who live on Whidbey Island. They actually record their lectures at home when, uh, when they're at home at night, and possibly their Internet connection isn't very good. Um, but when they come to work with their laptop, as soon as they get on campus, open the lid of their laptop, it uploads their lecture uh, to the system. Um, so it is possible if you got stuck in an airport somewhere and didn't even have an internet connection, you could record something. As soon as you got off the plane and had your internet connection, uh, it, would, it would be uploaded. Okay? And then everybody can participate. And by this, it's, it's, uh, we're referring specifically to the students. So you possibly, depending on the program you have, you may know what kind of technology your students have access to. And so this technology can be delivered in whatever format is common to your students. So if you know your students are iTunes users, you can deliver in iTunes compatible formats. If they're um, Flash users, that can be uh, delivered in that. If you're unsure, we can help you make that determination. But it'll, it'll work on all, all platforms.